Hi everyone, I'm Nassim and today I'm going to present our work about significance and coverage in group testing on social web. So this work is supervised by Idir Ben Waret and Siham Amel Yahya. To begin this presentation, I will present a motivating example. After that, I will present our framework and also the algorithms that are part of it. And after that, I will expose some experiment results and finally conclude with um, some uh, future direction of this work. So let's imagine we have an analyst who wants to um, form a panel of experts to judge some movies. The analyst wants this panel to be diverse. So to do that, the analyst will perform a multi-step exploratory process where at, at each process request is uh, executed. So let's say the, um, the analyst will compare groups based on their rating distribution in the beginning. After that, he or she will refine these groups based on age and gender and also explore the variance of the movies. And finally, um, he or she will compare the groups based on their overall rating uh, average. So to realize this, uh, this example, the analyst might use one of data exploration or visualization tools that were previously um, uh, developed. These, power, these tools are good as they help experts and you also novice users to discover some trends or relationships in the data. But using these tools might arise one problem, um, which is, uh, do we have enough evidence to say that the results of these tools are really significant or good? To answer this question, work by Zaho performed an analysis about these exploitation tools, and they, con they concluded that they often neglect um, the basic statistical rules, and without statistical tests, uh, data exploration might be misleading. So to overcome that, we need to perform a statistical test at each uh, level or step of uh, the exploration. So now I will present a brief overview about hypothesis testing. So um, let's imagine we have a data set D and we want to find some interesting insight or answer a question in this data set. We define this insight as pattern and we frame this pattern in, term, in terms of null hypothesis, which represent the default observation. And by default observation, we mean that the information is not really interesting. So the goal here is to find if the pattern is significant by rejecting this null hypothesis and accepting an alternative one, which represents um, the interesting information. To answer this question of rejection or not, we have to perform statistical tests that compute p-value. So given this p-value and statistical level alpha between 0 and 1, we reject the nil hypothesis if and only if the p-value is lower or equal to alpha. This means that S is significant with a probability of having a false discovery lower than alpha. So to realize our motivating example, where with statistical uh, tests, uh, we have to overcome these challenges. So the first one is about um, performing multiple uh, tests in a rigorous way, because when we uh, when multiple hypotheses are tested, the likelihood of making false discovery will increase. The second challenge is about data coverage, because when data is very large, the risk of exploring just a small part of it is very high. And also performing hypothesis testing um, does not ensure that our data is well represented or well covered. Our third and last challenge is about scalability as we have to um, develop a model that uh, scales for very large data sets. So our goal here is to design approach that returns groups that are significant and that maximizes um, the coverage of the input data. So to address these challenges, we developed framework uh, named group testing that takes as input a five top request R, um, where H0 is the null hypothesis and HA is the alternative hypothesis and which represent the information that we are seeking in this data. This tuple is completed with um, a user behavior, an aggregation measure, and an operator of comparison. This table below represents some examples of requests in our framework. Let's take the first one to 
um, as example. So R1 is stated as student groups whose rating mean is greater than 3.5. This statement represents the affirmation that we are seeking. So it represents the new hypo uh, sorry, the alternative hypothesis. And to have these groups, we have to reject a new hypothesis, which will be stated as student groups whose rating mean is equal to 3.5. So to have these groups, we have to um, perform one simple t-test. We named this problem of returning groups uh, with coverage as cover test problem. And it is formalized as following. So given a request R, a data set D, and all the candidates, we want to return set C of N candidates in the way that these candidates um, maximize the coverage of data set D and uh, satisfy the request R. Satisfying the request R means that we have to set the significance threshold here to um, a proper value. And to do that, our framework accommodates um, methods of multiple hypothesis testing procedures. These procedures offer a solution to a problem known as multiple testing problem. So let's imagine we have a set of M hypotheses that we want to test. And we know that the probability of having a false discovery when we perform a single test is alpha. So mm -hmm. the expectation to have false discoveries when we test um, M hypothesis is M times alpha. So in this case, when M is extremely high, the likelihood of having false discoveries will be also extremely high. So in this situation, we need to consider that we are not performing a single test, but we are performing multiple tests. So to overcome this problem, we want to uh, control the number of false discoveries. And one procedure to do that is um, is named family-wise error rate procedures, which control the probability of making a false discovery. The Monferroni correction gives a guarantee on this rate. So using the Monferroni correction, we reject a null hypothesis if and only if the p-value of this test is lower or equal to um, a on M, uh, sorry, alpha on M. This means that S is significant with a probability of having a false discovery lower or equal to alpha on M. This uh, procedure works good, but it has many drawbacks. It's too conservative, and when M is very high, it becomes uh, very difficult to flag a hypothesis as significant. To overcome, to overcome that, we use another um, method with, with the relaxed requirement. So these methods will um, control false discovery rate, which represents uh, the proportion of false discoveries on the number of all discoveries. Benjamini Yekutili uh, procedure controls the FDR. And to use this procedure, we have to compute all the p-values of all the hypotheses and um, sort them in increasing order. After that, we search for the PK that satisfy this inequality. And finally, reject all uh, the hypotheses that have a p-value uh, lower or equal to the PK and um, flag them as significant. After formalizing our problem, um, I will demonstrate that uh, this problem is actually MP-hard. So let's imagine we have a collection S of sets where each entry SI represents coverage of a candidate. In our previous problem, the goal is to find N candidates that maximize the coverage of the data. Uh, this, uh, this problem is exactly the same as finding N sets in this collection um, whose union has a maximal size. Uh, and this problem is known as the maximum coverage problem. And it is known to be NP-hard, which makes our problem NP-hard. But the good news here is that we have a solution that is based on a greedy algorithm and that has an approximation guarantee. This algorithm is called CoverG, which maximizes uh, data coverage and also accommodates one of um, the multiple hypothesis testing procedures. So CoverG will compute all the p-values, sort them, search for the pk, and scans the candidates in uh, a decreasing order based on their coverage and keep only uh, the end best one. This algorithm is good, but it is slow as it has to calculate all the p-value previously, which makes it 
really inefficient with large data set. The second drawback is that it can be applied when the number of hypotheses is not known before. So to overcome this problem, we use another solution called alpha investing. Alpha investing is a heuristic which assigned to each new hypothesis a budget from an amount of wealth. If the new hypothesis, if the test of the new hypothesis is lower or equal to this budget, we reject the new hypothesis and we obtain again um, on investment. Otherwise, the nil hypothesis is accepted and we have a penalty uh, that is deducted from this wealth. This procedure will scan um, the, the candidates randomly and will stop uh, when the wealth is equal to zero. So we developed Cover Alpha, which is based on um, alpha investing uh, algorithms, where uh, the candidates are scanned in the way they come and uh, we invest more significance or more wealth on um, the candidates that have higher coverage. Cover Alpha is mass, uh, much faster than Cover G because it doesn't calculate all the p-value previously, but it computes them on the slide, which makes it scale to large data sets. So to compare our algorithms, we used four real-world data sets, and uh, we... Uh, we used uh, three measures of experiment. The first one is based on significance where we have power, which is kind of um, recall and FDR, which is false discovery rates. The second measure is data coverage and the third one is response time. We used uh, various variants of our algorithms. So we developed coverage with both Bonfironi correction and Benjamin Yekutidi correction. We developed also cover alpha and we use the traditional Benjamin Yekuti collection as baseline. We also use the traditional Bonferroni collection as ground truth because it is um, the method that is the most conservative. We implemented previous Alva and Fisting policies to use them as baselines to uh, compare our results. So the first result is um, about power here in the left and FDR on the right. Data samples means just uh, the size of the data set. So here we can see that cover alpha in green and cover G Bonferroni in orange are the best in terms of power and also the best in terms of FDR, which means that they um, make more true discoveries and less false discoveries. Our second experiment is based on data coverage and significance interplay. In this figure, we can see that cover G and cover alpha here are the best in terms of coverage and they outperform the other methods. In the other hand, if we see um, the performances of significance, we can see that um, cover alpha here is the best than uh, cover G and has the same behavior than the baselines. Finally, we uh, compare the methods based on the response time, and we can see that cover alpha is better than uh, cover G and the traditional methods, but is outperformed mostly by all the other alpha investing uh, policies. So as summary of result, cover alpha is the best in terms of power and FDR. It has a better coverage um, than the baselines and uh, it runs much faster than covered. So as a conclusion in this work, we developed a framework group test, which is a framework for statistically sound group testing with data coverage. This work is aimed as first um, step toward the benchmark for combining data partitioning and hypothesis testing and um, leveraging coverage. So as a future work, we aim to develop a visualization tool that provides an analyst an environment um, to express their own request to use their own data sets, which will be combined with our algorithms that we uh, developed in this work. So this is the end of this presentation. Thank you for listening and I'm happy to answer your questions. Yeah. Uh, thanks for your presentation. Thank it was you. really interesting. So are there any questions from the audience? I don't see any questions popping up. I would have one question regarding your cover test. 
Um, have you considered or do you see that um, maybe the cover test could yes. also be formulated as another hypothesis? So that I say the hypothesis, it uh, should cover um, so much of the, the groups. Uh, I mean, we, we, we mean we, we want to cover as much as possible. So it, it's not like we are saying that we want um, this group, we, we are not uh, framing like hypothesis and saying that these groups uh, uh, covering, I don't know, 50% of the data. We're just uh, choosing all the groups that mm -hmm. uh, maximize uh, the cover the coverage of the input data. So here it's not like a hypothesis, it's um, a condition that we want mm -hmm. to, to fulfill. Yeah, to I totally understand that. I just yes. was wondering whether you considered it or looked into that. Um, because, um, yeah, you could basically just do the group testing, if I understand it correctly, as I just said, and I say I have to have at least 50% yes. coverage. If this yes, so if, okay. we, we can do that and, and, and use okay. it as, as a hypothesis. But, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And but of it, course, it makes sense to cover yeah. as, lot, as much as yeah. possible. I mean, uh, we, we use the hypothesis just to, to compare between the groups mm -hmm. and, and have uh, and say if they are significant or no, and uh, yeah, but we we can uh, definitely do that actually. Yes. 